and welcome back to our month of Azure Databricks with Advancing Analytics. So today we're going to talk about creating and configuring your clusters. Now your clusters are the very heartbeat of what happens inside Databricks. So we're going to go to our Databricks workspace and we're going to load different options that we've got here. Uh, what we're going to be doing is working in the clusters tab. Now whenever we're working with Spark, we're working with lots of different clusters. We can have many, many, many different clusters defined inside Databricks. And it's essentially which computers are going to do the work. Do I want to define a particularly heavy, very high-powered, expensive cluster to do a big data processing job, or something very small and lightweight for doing something fairly ad hoc? So let's go to the clusters tab, and you'll immediately see there's two different types. So job clusters are one-off single-serving clusters. So if I have set a job similar to an agent job, and said, run this piece of work and do it on your own cluster, then that will create a job cluster and I'll see the ones that are in there for jobs that are currently executing. And they are single serving, as soon as it's done it will turn off. Everything else is done by interactive clusters. So the majority of our work, we're going to be using interactive clusters and we define them, we set them up, multiple people can use them. I can have one thing turned on permanently doing lots of different jobs. So interactive clusters are the majority of what we're going to be doing. Okay, so let's create a new cluster, we can give it a name. So this is my data processing cluster, so I'm just going to call it processing for now. And you can see I've got lots of different things I can have here. So I'm going to talk through briefly some of the different settings to give you that feel for what we're working with and how it's going to work. Okay, so we've got our name and then cluster mode. We've got two different types, standard or high concurrency. So high concurrency used to be called serverless mode. Essentially, you don't have this head driver brain server and you just have a number of workers and it's optimized for having lots of people working on it doing small ad hoc jobs. So it's good at balancing workload, it's good at concurrency and capacity management. Um, if you're building a job that is, you know, you're building a cluster to do a specific job start to finish and it could be running on its own, then you gen generally want to go standard. The most data processing jobs will be using standard. The runtime, this is essentially the payload of libraries that you want installed on the cluster when it first turns on. So I've got all my normals, so I've got my 5.4 normal, it's a current uh, release of uh, the Davix runtime, but I've got a few different variants of that as well. So by picking this runtime, I'm saying when you turn on, copy these libraries onto the server. I've got a GPU mode, and so that'll have the NVIDIA drivers installed on it by default. I've got an ML mode, and that'll come with a ton of ML machine learning style libraries. Now, every library you have on your cluster when you turn it on means it takes slightly longer to turn that cluster on. So you've got a whole different range of things, but only use the one that you actually need. Now, you can do a load of back, older, historical, legacy versions of the runtime, so you can have backward compatibility. If you build a system on 5.3 and they release 5.4, you don't have to upgrade. You can leave your cluster running in 5.3 so that nothing breaks until you've had a chance to test it. Okay, Python version. We've got two or three. Three is now the default. This just is your own personal flavor of Python, so majority of people are using Python 3 now. So I'd stick with that. And then we've got what they call the autopilot. So these are great little handy features for managing when your cluster's turned on. So I've got auto scaling, which I've got allow me to choose do I want a minimum maximum workers or do I want to stick with a single number? So depending on how busy the server is, it'll turn workers on or off. And then I can have it turn the whole thing off after a moment of inactivity. So I like to keep it as 15 minutes. So if I don't put a query in, after 15 minutes it'll turn itself off. And I don't have to build a load of scripts saying, turn it off when I'm done, turn it on when I need to turn it off when I'm done. So definitely recommend having that set, and that'll save you a lot of money in the long run. Okay, and then we look at the worker type itself. Now, you might recognize these. These are the standard Azure VM types and a whole load of them. I've got my GPU ones down the bottom, which I need if I've chosen a GPU-enabled server. Majority of the times you wouldn't unless you're doing something particularly distributed deep learning -y. So I can choose do I want a balance of CPU and memory, do I want memory optimized? Do I want to have a very fast disk? I've got a lot of choice about how I build this out. And remember, I also choose how many. So I do want some big, big meaty servers and just a few of them. Or do I want a lot of very small ones? And then I can choose the driver. So the head, this brain server, is that the same as a worker? Or do I want a slightly different configuration? And it depends on the kind of work you're going to be doing. And we'll talk about that in a separate video. I've then got some advanced options from doing some particular Spark applications. I can put some settings in there. I can do logging. So if I wanted to keep all of the different telemetry as I go through and run things to a local storage, to blob storage, I can set that there. And then really importantly, I can do tags. 
So if I'm setting up clusters for different teams in my organization, and I want to say, well, this is a data science cluster, this is a data processing cluster, I can add tags in here, and then the resources that are created will get created with a tag, which means I can then, at the end of the month, say, well, you spent a ton of money because you built a big cluster and you left it turned on. So loads of good options in there. That's pretty much the things you need to know. I'm going to create that cluster. I'll see in a moment a nice pending cluster. And then when that's ready, that'll be there as active. I can start using it. When I'm finished, I can terminate that cluster, or I can leave it for 15 minutes and it will terminate itself. And then that configuration will stay there for 30 days of inactivity before it's cleaned up. So you can have lots and lots of clusters defined and mix and match in between them as you want to use them. Do not be afraid to have lots and lots of different clusters all tailored for your workloads. So hopefully that's useful and gives you a good overview of where to start in creating a cluster and getting started with Databricks. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.